everybody, it's Christy, your digital technology librarian, and I am here with you again for yet another Film Rec Friday. Uh, this week we are doing a special wild card week, which means there's no specific theme. I'm just going to do a series of recs for films that I've been wanting to present to you guys and recommend for weeks to months now at this point, but they just never really fit in with one particular category or those categories filled up too quickly. So anyway, um, these are all just movies that I really, really enjoy and think that you might enjoy as well. I tried to pick titles that are from all different genres, so um, hopefully something in here will spark your interest and get you to try them out. Um, as always, these recommendations are always available for free with your Mylan Berlin Library card from one of our three video services, and those services are Clevenet's Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and of course Canopy. Uh, so without any further ado, let's get to those recommendations. Okay, so my first set of recommendations, as usual, all come from Clevenet's Overdrive, and the very first recommendation of those is going to be for a film called Paris Je Thème. Now, Paris Je Thème is actually an anthology film that is made up of 18 short films, all centered around uh, the setting of Paris. Now, what's really, really cool about this one is that all 18 of these stories come from different creators. So you have 18 totally different points of view. You also have 18 totally different casts. Um, some are American cast, some are international cast with Parisian actors and French actors, uh, and it's just a really cool collection of tales that, outside of that one setting they have in common, might otherwise feel totally disjointed, but somehow just having them all take place in Paris really makes this fascinating sort of connective vibe. Now, the other cool thing is because it comes from 18 different points of view, um, all of these stories have marvelously different feels to them. Um, some are somewhat surreal, others are really simple and straightforward, some are romances, some are tragedies, some are just weird one-offs that are really, really funny. Like one of them is stars Steve Buscemi, and it sort of follows his experience with accidentally locking eyes with another couple of people who are also commuting through Paris one day. Um, this other one that really stayed with me is about um, a mother played by Juliette Binoche uh, who is struggling to deal with the death of her young son. She ends up one evening meeting a random cowboy riding his horse down the streets of Paris. Super surreal moment, but really, really beautifully done short. I mean, the acting is on point and Willem Dafoe plays the cowboy is always amazing, as is Juliette Binoche. Uh, so so you, you get this full range of emotions and this complete story in just a few minutes. Um, Natalie Portman plays in another one uh, that sort of talks about the possibility of a relationship ending. So you get the you run the gamut of all of those emotions as well. Uh, I really, really loved this. So um, if you're in the mood for something a little different, you don't you want a lot of stories instead of just one in an evening, please do check out Paris Jatem. You won't be sorry. It's it's an excellent anthology. Um, my second recommendation from Clevenet's Overdrive is for a documentary called Forks Over Knives. Uh, Forks Over Knives is one of those food and health documentaries that sort of, it definitely has a specific point of view, but it also is really great to watch if you're someone who maybe has looked askance at the concept of a vegan diet in the past. Uh, because it does really, really do delve into um, the history of, say, like the meat industry here in the States. It also does a really good job of looking at the history of diet, not only within Western countries, but also in Eastern countries where illnesses like diabetes 2 and um, 
heart issues are significantly lower uh, than, say, here in the West. So it, it tries its best to sort of push its own agenda with historical facts and information. Um, it was really interesting to watch uh, also because it follows the lives of a handful of people who were recently diagnosed with, say, type 2 diabetes and heart uh, disease. Um, and it sort of traced how they did with and um, all plant-based diet, uh, you know, like how that dedication definitely paid off in like turning things around. Of course, they don't really trace anyone who did not have success <laughs> with plant-based diet, but that's again, sort of the nature of documentaries. They have a very specific point of view they want to get across. Um, again, if you're skeptical about say veganism, uh, and health, make sure you check it out just because, again, it's one of those things where the more you see all points of view, the more you're exposed to information. Uh, and I did find it fascinating and it was actually really um, entertaining to watch. It's not a slow documentary at all. So uh, Forks Over Knives, check it out. Interesting documentary, also available on Klebnet's Overdrive. Um, finally, my last recommendation from Overdrive is for... Uh, one of my favorite sort of slasher films um, called Battle Royale. Now, if you've ever seen Hunger Games, then you're definitely familiar with the concept of um, children being thrown into arena and being forced to fight to the death. Now, Battle Royale came out about a decade or so before the Hunger Games, and it is that same concept, but with a whole lot more violence uh, depicted on screen. It is a rough movie to watch, but it is amazingly well put together. If you like slasher films, definitely recommended. Um, it is uh, a Japanese story based on a Japanese novel uh, where uh, a group of about 40 or 50 uh, first-year high school students are sent to this deserted island where they are given just like a map, a little tiny bit of food and some random weapons and they have to be the last team standing. Um, everybody is collared. So if they try to escape or if they try to break these the specific rules that are part of this game slash experiment, um, the collar is going to explode. I mean, it's intense. So if that's not your preferred kind of film, then this might not want be it for you. But if you do like slasher films, Blood, Guts, and Gore, Battle Royale is really, really awesome. Um, I've been a fan for years. Uh, there were several sequels, I believe, uh, at least two, I want to say, which were not as good as this first one. So um, the other thing that's really great about the Battle Royale that's available on Klebnet's Overdrive is that it is available with, um, both the original Japanese language track with English subtitles, but I believe there's also an English dub available, um, as well. So if you're not a subtitle fan, the dub is actually pretty decent. I did watch, like, watch slash listen, listen to a little bit of it, uh, via that method. And it was not one of those horrible dubs that just makes you want to turn everything off, or at least not for me anyhow. Uh, so do uh, check it out. Battle Royale, also available on Klebnet's Overdrive. Now, our second set of recommendations all come from Hoopla Digital. And the first of those is pretty much a movie that's the most polar opposite of Battle Royale that you could get. And that is The Cutting Edge. Now, The Cutting Edge is a silly fluffy romantic comedy that um, tells the story of a very difficult female pairs figure skater who constantly struggles with her different partners and is finally paired off with a has-been uh, Olympic ice hockey skater. Um, 
Now, they're played by Moira Kelly and Dee Dee Sweeney. The chemistry is ridiculous. It is an absolutely ludicrous concept to bring those two different worlds together, but it works so well. I mean, it so reminds me of sort of like the old 30s, 40s screwball comedies that sort of had plots that made no sense at all. Say like bringing up baby with like the leopard and, and anyway, sorry. I digress. Um, but again, it has like these plot points that are so out there and so ridiculous, but still somehow work based solely on the chemistry of the two leads. And these two have chemistry in abundance. I absolutely love them. And they're really, really cute together. Like the, the story makes you smile. I mean, that's the whole point. Um, or the idea of like this figure skater who falls in love with this ice hockey player just because they're forced into this situation. Um, and they are both so totally different. She comes from a ton of money. He absolutely does not. Uh, so seeing all of these elements and all these different words, worlds collide when the two meet and are forced together um, makes for a really, really fun um, 90 minute movie. So if you're in the mood for something fluffy, funny, silly, um, and romantic, you can't go wrong with The Cutting Edge. Definitely watch it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, my second recommendation from Hoopla is the movie musical Evita. Um, I'm not a huge Madonna fan. I have never been a massive Madonna fan, but I absolutely love this, um, uh, this adaptation. She does an excellent job. Um, it also stars Antonio um, Banderas, uh, who I'd never been a huge fan of either, but I really like him in this as well. Um, Evita traces, of course, the uh, story of Eva Perón, uh, where she comes from poverty and slowly rises up the ranks. Um, oftentimes by dating powerful men, until she meets Juan Perón and then everything explodes into this uh, crazy tale of how she's able to use her skills as a powerful orator to sway the country, you know, and question, there comes questions of, um, you know, who's really running things. It's, it's, it really is interesting because in between these really fantastic musical numbers, you have a lot of political questions going on. Um, and it's, uh, really, really fascinating how well all of these actors do. Um, Evita, of course, is played by, uh, Madonna. Antonio Banderas plays Che, who is more of just a narrator who could be, um, a political leader as well, but you never get a hundred percent confirmation on that. Um, so you also have, um, Juan Peron played by Jonathan Price, who is always phenomenal. Um, and of course a fantastic soundtrack. So if you're in the mood for a movie musical, uh, if you're a Madonna fan, if you're a Banderas fan, it, definitely check it, check it out. Uh, even if you're not fans of those actors, it will definitely move you. So, uh, please do try Evita, uh, on Hoopla Digital. You won't regret it. My final recommendation on Hoopla this week is for, uh, the Veronica Mars movie. I had no idea this was on here. I was a huge fan of the series Veronica Mars when it aired on television. I love the idea. It, the original series followed this teen detective, um, as she solved both small and very large crimes. Uh, of course it was also dealing with her relationships with people in the school. She had once been this pretty popular character whose father was the sheriff through some series of events, she ended up losing her status as cool and popular and suddenly had to navigate as sort of a pariah. Um, and it's really, really, really well done. Kristen Bell, of course, plays Veronica Mars. She does an amazing job uh, as the character. So in the film, uh, it's sort of following her life 
after all of that. She's just graduated from law school. She no longer lives in this small town that she had in the past. Um, she's sort of lost touch with all of these people. And then she's pulled back into this old setting uh, and she has to figure out what she really wants now. You know, she'd had, she had set up this great life um, elsewhere where she was going to be a really successful lawyer. She had this proper boyfriend and everything. And then when she goes back, she meets everyone as well as an old sort of nemesis slash boyfriend. Anyway, uh, you get to see all of these familiar characters and how the interplay goes with them. And it's a really good continuation of the series. I was very ready when it first came out not to not to like it simply because how are you going to move on from this life that you had before with her character. But it does a great job of encapsulating a lot of information very quickly. Um, I would recommend that you watch the series before you see the film because there's not going to be the same amount of impact. But if you are a fan of the series already, please do make sure you check it out. If you've not watched the movie, if you were like me and sort of hesitant about it originally, um, it's excellent and it's a great continuation. Uh, so please do check out Veronica Mars, the movie two thumbs up. Excellent. Um, well, that was the last recommendation as far as films go. I did want to do a quick shout out about, um, TV series. There are a ton of BBC TV series available through Hoopla Digital. In particular, I just want to do a quick shout out about the Antiques Roadshow. I know there are a lot of people who are huge fans of the American PBS show that's on, but you can actually watch several series, uh, seasons of the British version, same concept. It goes from city to city and then people bring in their items. Some are worth very little to, or nothing at all, really, but some are worth a huge amount of money. Some of these item, random items. And it's really cool because if you've not seen these British, this British version, version, you have like, I believe four seasons of full episodes that you can watch and trace and enjoy as well. So, uh, British Antiques Roadshow also available on Hoopla Digital. If you're a fan of the uh, American stories, please do check out the British version. My very last recommendation of the week, of course, comes from our Canopy service, and it is for the movie Party Girl. Now, Party Girl is a very, very 90s movie. So for some people, it might seem dated. But this has been one of my favorite movies for years and years. Um, when I first saw it pop up on the Canopy screen, I actually gave out a Yelp. Uh, I immediately texted my friends uh, that they had to watch it because I'd been telling them about this film for years and it's not been available for streaming uh, anywhere uh, that I know of uh, for a very long time. So I was super excited and I made all of my friends make sure they put it on their watch list. Um, I told some of my coworkers about it. I was seriously so excited. Um, and even after a rewatch, I still love the film. I hadn't seen it in a long time. Uh, it follows this young 20 something girl who is a quintessential 90s New York party girl. Uh, she doesn't really have much of, uh, of much ambition. She doesn't have specific goals that she's going for. She just is out to have a good time. Um, and she is played oh, with a plum by Parker Posey. This was probably the first Parker Posey film I saw. Uh, and she is so good in this role. Um, uh, you should probably dislike her, but I absolutely don't. Her character is so vapid at first, but you still like her. You still enjoy seeing her on screen. You still you still probably think you'd want to hang out with her, or at least I would. I don't know. Um, anyway, she ends up coming into some difficult situations uh, and ends up working as a library clerk. I liked this movie long before the world of libraries entered my life beyond me being a patron. Um, so I don't know if it was you know, fate or what. But I loved, I loved that she ended up working at this library and she ends up really loving being a library worker. She ends up loving books. She 
also has this odd relationship with the head librarian who was friends with her mother and they have sort of a mother daughter relationship as well. And it's so difficult, uh, but you can tell like they really have such a great vibe together. Um, so there's fantastic club music that, that plays throughout the entire thing. There's also a little bit of romance going on and it's definitely a coming of age story for her, even though she's already 20 something, she really does grow up throughout the course of the film. Um, as a former New Yorker, I love watching like nineties New York go by cause it is definitely nineties New York in this, in this film. Um, so, so that's just yet another layer of, of fun and interest to it. So if you're looking for something lighter and fun, uh, Party Girl is definitely an odd, fun film to watch. Uh, it's a vehicle for Parker Posey, 100%. She does an exceptionally good job. So please do check out uh, Party Girl on Canopy. You won't regret it. Um, and with that, again, my recommendations for the week are all over. So if, as every week, you have any recommendations of your own, if you have films that you want to, you, you've been watching that you enjoy your series, let us know down in the comments. I'm always looking for recs for like that. Um, also, if you have recommendations for themes, let me know. Um, I have one about um, animal films coming up that I'm really excited about. Those ones are always really fun and sweet. So please do let us know, communicate with us. We love hearing from you. Uh, so with that, everyone have a wonderful weekend. I hope you find some great films. You found something that would interest you that's been recommended. Uh, so have a great time. See ya. Bye.